Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and in a world that is often confronted with absolutely awful and unsolvable problems. At least we get to do Sudoku every day and that's what this channel is here for. A couple of those every day to uh, keep the gremlins away. And we'll be looking, oh look at this. This puzzle by James Cop is called Threes in the Corners, and you can see why. Now, James has slightly taken away the fun, because he's planted his threes in the corners, and we're not going to be able to reveal any in the other corners. But, um, nonetheless, it's a lovely, lovely idea. It's brilliant to have a grid that just has two threes in the corners to start with. A bit miraculous in a way, but there's a, there's a chess knight's rule, and there's an intriguing rule about thermometers, which I will explain in a moment or two. First of all, on Patreon, um, as well as our monthly reward, which you still have time to enter, there is the chance to see Simon solving, I can't pronounce this, phenomenon, which I think is a portmanteau of phenomeno and phenomenon. Um, it's a brilliant puzzle and Simon, well, he actually solves it brilliantly. I don't care that it's pretty much three hours long. It's a brilliant solve of a brilliant puzzle, and do take a chance. If you're with us on Patreon, have a look at that. Also have a go at the Sudoku... Uh, did it again. The Solver in Sudoku Land Hunt by Demono, which is there. And if you like story-based Sudoku hunts, you must get involved in our Kickstarter, which is in the link under the puzzle link on this video. And uh, it is going to be brilliant. We really think it is. Peter C. Hayward is writing a story. We've already reached the funding level. Thank you so much to everyone who's supported it already. If you've thought about supporting the Kickstarter and you haven't done it, bear in mind that the more people that support it, the more puzzles will go into it. There's a stretch goal already for um, a new puzzle every 10K that's raised in it. So please consider that. We think it's going to be a brilliant product. You can see some of the artwork by Hayley Mooney already. And... Uh, yeah, we're, we're just really looking forward to bringing that to you in time for Christmas. Get it for someone you love um, or yourself, if you love yourself. And you should, because that's the greatest love of all, according to Whitney Houston. Um, and that is, I mean, these, these things that we bring you, they're fantastic. So are our apps. Check out the links under the video. Sven Sudoku Pad's there, the merchandise as well. Um, and we are linking for the first link to Threes in the Corners by James Cop. Um, and the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So one to nine goes in every row, every column, and every three by three box. No digit can appear a chess knight's move away from itself. So whatever digit went in this purple cell would not be allowed in these other highlighted cells. And uh, you can see that the first two there in box one, it couldn't go in any way by Sudoku rules. But now it's not allowed into those four as well. And to remind myself of the rule when there's a chess puzzle, Emily has given me these brilliant chess pieces and it's right here in front of my eyes where I will be able to miss that as well. When So at about 10 minutes into the puzzle, when I'm going, I don't see what I can possibly do next, hopefully my eyes will fall on the red knight and I will know that there is a knight's move restriction in the puzzle. Now, here comes the weird thermometer rule. Place two thermometers into the grid, one of six cell length and the other of nine cell length. Both thermometers have their bulbs in column one and are straight traveling in a southeasterly direction, which is like that, and sorry, and are straight traveling in a southeasterly direction. So they are straight, so they must be on a diagonal. Numbers increase from the bulb to the end of the thermometers. And that's it. That's all the rules that we need to make this unique. It's quite shocking in a way that that is true. James does this sort of thing sometimes, though. Give it a try. See how it works. I bet you'll be as impressed as I'm sure I will be. I'm going to restart my clock and say, let's get cracking. And I think we can get cracking because I think that nine cell thermometer is a giveaway. Nine cell thermometer traveling southeast, surely it has to travel down, down that path. I mean, I'm certain that that's what it means. It's, it's really a case of interpretation rather than deduction, actually. But I think we can put those digits in those cells. Actually, 
let's not make them orange. Let us do a bit of pen tooling instead. We will make them into a... Th if I could draw, we would make them into a thermo. There we go. And a bulb. There. That is our first thermo. Now, our second thermo, I think it has to start in one of those three cells. It starts in column one and it's six long. Well, it must do. So it's either down there, let's make that red. Down there, we'll call that yellow. We'll colour that yellow or down there and be blue. Um, I was about to rule out red because it can't have a nine there. But of course, this is only a six cell thermo and it doesn't have to have all the digits. Um, two. Oh, hang on. This one sees that too, doesn't it? Thank you, Mr. Chess Knight. You've done your job already. This cell cannot be one, two, three, or four if we count the chess move as relevant. So this thermometer cannot begin with anything short of five, and that is too big for a six cell thermometer. So we have already ruled, oops, ruled out red. Is it yellow or blue? Which one can we rule out next? This cell can, oh, neither of these cells could be one, two, or three. So the thermometer is going to start with a four, then have a five, then have a six, then a seven, then an eight. You can see these are not actually going to be ruled out by night's moves or anything. And I'm aware that I have corner marked across boxes. I like to keep corner marks to reveal where a particular digit is within a box. So four has to be in one of those cells because we know that one of these is the thermobulb starting with a four. But that doesn't apply to five and eight, but I will skate over that for the moment. I hope we can figure that one out. I don't think I can tell just from what we've got which of blue or yellow is correct for the thermo. I can't see how. So let's look at threes because we're given threes in the corner. Um, and although they are losing their religion, they are telling us something about threes in column two and row two. So the three in column two must be in one of those two cells. It can't be there because of the knight's move. The three in row two must be in one of those two. The three in box nine must be in one of those two. They both see that cell and that cell. So I'm going to mark positions for threes. They also, these two, both see that cell and that cell. When I talk about seeing, what I'm saying is that cell sees both of these positions. And therefore, whichever one of them is a three, it can't be there. It sees that one by Knight's move. Um, so three is in one of those cells. Oh, and these two both see that, and these two both see that. So in box five, ah, in box five, three is in one of those four positions. Now, I'm going to divide those down because I think that matters. It's either in that pair of cells, and therefore that's a three, and then that must be a three. Yeah, let's colour these, actually. Either three is red here or green here. Let's see what happens with that. Red in one of those two. So that becomes red. That becomes red in column five. That's red in box nine. That sees those two. So one of those is red, and they both see that cell, which is not red, therefore. That would have to be red. OK, and we couldn't quite finish off that way around. We'd, we'd be left with red in one of these two. I mean, an, an X-wing between those. I can't see the knight's move spoiling that. Now, if... Ah, and that is not able to be three, because we started with one of those being three on this course, and we learned that that couldn't be three if that was the case. The alternative is that one of these is three, and we'll call them green. Then that one goes green. That's green. That's green in box nine. One of these is green. And that's not green. So that would be green in box five. 
and then also one of those would still be green. Uh, it's not... I don't think anything there is ruled out. That's annoying. So threes are either in... in the red... Well, this is either... No, it's, I was going to say it's either red or green on that. It doesn't have to be either, actually. Well, sorry, that's really confusing the position. Threes are either in the red cells or the green cells, but both have an X-wing of options in a couple of positions. That may not be worth pencil marking. I'm going to leave that pencil marking in, but I'm ready to take out that colouring at any moment. Let's just look at fours, because one of these is a four. So four now can't be in any of those cells, and also it can't be in those two by night's move from there. So four is in one of these two in box, box four. They both see those two cells and four can't be there. So four's in one of those four cells and that's not really gonna help. But maybe one of these, see, do we have a situation where either, I think we do. Yeah, okay, what I'm going to say has happened now. I don't know if this is right. Tell me if I'm wrong, I don't know. I think we've got a situation where either this is three or that is four. For those not to be true, for yellow to be a genuine thermo with five and six on it here, where would you place three and four in box four? They'd both have to be in this cell. It would be a weird Schrodinger cell that we're not allowed in this puzzle. Isn't that right? If that was five, six in yellow, this would be both three and four. Isn't that weird? Why have I not been able to see that by some means? Oh, also, sorry, I did work out that that wasn't a three, didn't I? Because we had the same situation. If three was in one of those, it turned out it had to be there. If three was in one of those, that's why I marked it green. It had to be there. That couldn't be three. Oh, and I see. Yeah, you see, this is weird. I didn't spot this at all the first time through. This would be the simple way of proving which thermo was right. If that was a three, then that was a three in box two. And that kills both thermos because it puts threes in positions on both blue and yellow where three can't be. So actually, we learnt first. I think my conclusion about yellow isn't right is still true, but I just want to see if I should have got that earlier. If that can't be a three, that's a three. Red is the correct three position. That, sorry, that's a three. I should go in this order. That's three, so that's three. So this is three. So this is three. And then we can take out loads of three pencil marks that I've made. All of those, I reckon. We can take out all of, well, we can take out all of the greens because they're wrong. Actually, we can take out these reds because they're not interesting anymore now that we've got three. There is this remaining X-wing on red threes here. Oh, I see. Hang on. That, that is not what determined whether we were blue or yellow because although that's correct, it hasn't resolved which of the thermos is which. So I go back. Oh, good. I'm pleased because it means this deduction I made about how yellow couldn't have five and six there is still genuinely useful. Um, if yellow had five and six there, four would have to be here in box four, but three would also have to be here and it can't be. So yellow is wrong. That's the next conclusion. So I'm just going to um, remove yellow. Yellow is not the right thermo. In fact, uh, let's remove all the little pencil marks off that. Eight, seven, they're wrong. We're going to fill in, in a moment, all the blue cells with actual digits because this is our starting point for the puzzle. 
Well, I mean, sorry, we've done the break-in and this is what it gives us. That's what I'm trying to say, very inarticulately. Um, and I'm going to post a... Th oh, stop it. I'm going to post a thermo down it like that and a bulb like that. And that's enough of the pen tool for now. There we go. Right. This is our starting position. We've found the two thermos. Ah, oh, look, six. We can just place it in box one. Can't be there or there by night's move. Uh, nine we can place in box five. Then there's a one, two pair. We've got a seven, eight, nine triple in box one, if I could highlight that. Um, the one, two both see this cell. So it can't be three, four, seven, or five either. The one, two both see this cell, which also sees eight, six, seven, and five on the knight's move. Hmm, this isn't quite doing it, is it? Um, I thought by now we'd have the threes figured out, and we haven't, or the fours. So I, I used the fact that this couldn't both be three and four, but it didn't actually tell me what it was. It's almost ironic. Um, and I should apologize for a little bit of mischief in a puzzle title the other day, talking of ironic, um, which was a mischief in a further one. But yeah, a couple of days ago, I called a puzzle a very unique puzzle. I was fully aware that that would irritate one or two people who see unique as an adjective that is binary. Either a thing is unique or it isn't. It can't be the most unique. It can't be very unique. It can't be qualified as unique in some way. And I did that deliberately, knowing that I was being a bit cheeky with the language. But actually, and some people pointed this out, I think something can be more unique than something else. If it's unique in, diff in two different ways, like, I, I don't know, I was going to use an example from maths, but I don't have one prepared, so that's foolish. But if something was unique in two different ways, surely it's more unique than something that is unique in only one way. I think that's logical. Actually, I think some of these adjectives that are thought of as binary can actually be used in qualified ways. If I describe someone as the most married man I'd ever met, does that sentence have any meaning? I think it does. I think it says something about what he's like being married, this man. It, I, I think it's metaphorical, certainly, but although you can either be married or not married, you could be the most married man someone had ever met. Anyway, that's a fascinating language diversion that has no place in this video. I'm carrying on with the solve now, don't worry. Um, I'm quickly trying to pencil mark some digits to see if we can learn anything from sixes, which we can't really. Oh yes, we can. None of those are six. None of those are six. Six is in one of those two. They both see that cell. And that doesn't help. Um, seven, three, eight, nine. Nine is in one of those. Someone I can hear has set off an alarm. Now, neither of the, none of these cells, none of these five cells can be five or seven because of the proximity of five and seven to that box. That is going to mean, ah, that can't be five as well by night's move. So five is definitely in one of those two. Seven is in one of those three. The five that's in one of those two is going to put five in one of these three. That isn't going to quite tidy up this box. This seems to be where it's all happening, either in box five. I didn't quite make as much of that one, two pair as I'd hoped. Or in boxes four and seven. Now, what else have we got going in box seven? Oh, eight. That eight sees that cell, and this eight sees this whole plus shape. So one of those is an eight. That's going to put eight somewhere up here. Take it out of this cell, which is now six or nine. This eight pair they both see all of those. And this eight sees those. So eight is now constrained to one of those three. 
which all see that cell. Is that helpful? This eight sees all of that. And we said that had just been ruled out. So now eight is in one of those three in box four. This is the sort of thing you sometimes have to do in these knight's moves puzzles. And you know that James won't have given us something where we have to work a little on the thermos and then the rest falls into place. So it's probably appropriate thinking. I mean, there is also a very real chance that I'm just missing the bleeding obvious somewhere. Seven, I think, has to be in one of those two, because this one sees all of those, and there's that as well. Those positions for seven mean seven can't be here. Ah, and we've got those three positions for seven. Oh, they only rule out that, which was already ruled out. What about this cell? Can't be nine, seven, three, six, two, or five. And I've said it can't be four for some reason. That's because four is in one of those two. So that is one or eight. So come on, help a bit more, will you? Not you, I mean the, the grid. I don't know. This is difficult now. Um, there is a nine in one of these two, that's just Sudoku, and they both see that cell, which can't be nine. So one of those two is a nine. What does that mean? This nine's already seeing all of those. Um, no, I don't know. Oh, those three are nine. Hang on, what's going on with nine? Right, I'm going to get focused on nine in this row now. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look, right. Is this true? This is true. Okay, it's nine in column two. This is lovely. This is so clever. Right, nine in one of those three mean that nine can't be here because they all see it, either by knight's move or vertically. So where is nine in column two? If it can't be there, it's got to be in one of these two cells. I'm going to colour them. Nine is in one of those two cells. Now, what's interesting about that is there are some cells that they see together, and they would include all of these, of which the relevant ones are these two. We've just worked out that nine couldn't be here in, in row six, column two, but now we know it can't be here. So where is nine in row six? It can't be there by knight's move from that, so it's here. And that's going to fix our threes in red. That's where we get the X-wing from. So let's get rid of the old red colouring now. We've dealt with that. Um, that is not a three now. It doesn't mean it's an eight. It means it's not a three. Nothing more. But I'm pleased to have got that three X-wing resolved. Now, nine here. That nine knights move. One of these two is a nine. That's definite. They both see that cell. That's not a nine. Now we've got nine in box one. Come on, keep going, nine. We know there's a nine in one of those two. That gets rid of nine here. So we've got a nine in each of those pairs. We've got a nine in one of those two. Oh, are we left with X-wings? X-wings there and X-wings here. I think we are. That is depressing, actually, because I thought that was going to get us really cracking along. I was very pleased with that spot. Oh, these can't have a seven in from there. So the seven in the column is down here. Six, two, five, three. I don't know what pencil markings I've got going. Oh, they also can't have a four in. This is now a four, seven pair. Look. That can't be a four seven pair from there. And that is not four or seven from our pencil marking. Yes, it, oh, in fact, this has become a four. I didn't notice that in box four. That four is fixed. This is a four seven pair though, that is true. That four puts a four in one of these two. Come on, fours or sevens, who's gonna, who's gonna contribute most? 
four and seven. Um, we know that there's a seven in one of those. Four. Oh, is that really not going to do anything? Six, four, three. Some annoying alarm outside. I don't think you can hear it, but it is really annoying the heck out of me. It's just this tiny high pitched bleeping. Um, now, nine. That's fixed nine here. That's great. This being a four seven pair, that's huge. That's fixed my nine X wing on the left. Doesn't do anything for the nine X wing in rows one three. That's fine. Four seven there though. This must be one or eight. That's all that's left by elimination in the column. I don't need those to be yellow anymore. Um, ooh, this can't be one, so one in row five is over this side. That's going to stop that being one. Doesn't do much else there. Uh, nine, three, six, four. That can't be five. Oh, we know we've got, oh, I have four marked in those cells. It can't be there anymore. We've got that four seven nine three four seven. That's a kind of set. Yes, so six in the box has to be here. That's going to fix eight in the box. That's going to fix eight in box eight. Excellent. That's made this a one. That's fixed two and one in the central box. Come on, keep going. What can this be? Any of five seven eight. That one can only be five or seven. Let's mark up the others. One, six, nine, four, three. What about two? No, eight is in one of those two cells in this box. In fact, it's there. That's the only place it can be. Right, that finishes box one. That's a second complete box in the puzzle. Two, that's a naked two now. That's a naked five. That's a seven. There's a third box. That seven looks down here and sorts out the four seven pair. We've got one, two, five to place here. That one can't be a one by night's move. Oh, the alarm stopped. That's good news. Right, one, six, eight, three, four, seven. That also can't be a two. This is five or nine. So two is in one of those two cells. Is that nothing? is touching that by night's move. Okay, I know what that does. That puts, that, if this was two, that would see both of these and that would be two. Alternatively, that's two. So one of these two is a two in the row. Oh, so, no, let's use the seven. That's seeing a seven. That's giving us a seven here. That's putting a seven in one of those two cells. Um, we've got one eight six triple here. Eight can't be there or there, so we've placed the eight. And six sorts out the other two by the knights move again. Ah, oh, this is brilliant, James. This is very close to miracle style. That two four pair, what's that doing for us? Seven three eight nine, this can't be two or four. I heavily marked this box for sixes earlier, and that's not resolving anything. Four, two, nine, three, nine, five, eight, three. Okay, I don't know where to go next. I'm going to have to just think again. Getting close to a finish, though. Nine, four, three, seven, eight. This can't be six. Um, it is one, two, or five, and that's two or five. What have we got to do in this column? Nine is up there somewhere. So these are from two, six, and five. Ah, that sees five and six. That is a naked two. Why didn't anybody tell me? And that is now a naked one because of the five. Good. That's four. We can finish the row. That is now a one. It sees a two and a five. We've got to put a five and a six in the row. Simples. This is a 2-4 pair that I can't resolve, as far as I can see. This is a 6-1 pair that I can. I think we're just finishing off now. 8-4-5 at the top. Yeah, that cell sees 4 and 5 on the long thermo. 8-5-4, that's 9, that's 6. Uh, what have we got here? 1-2-7. 
I'm sure that can't be two, that can't be one, this can't be seven. Maybe they're not resolved apart from that. Got a two, four pair there, two, four, eight, three, one. That is a naked nine. This one can't be either of those five, seven pairs, so that's six. Um, that's probably the last six in the puzzle, so it was very straightforward to do rather than doing it the complicated way. One sees both those cells, so one in row three is done. That is five, that's seven. Yeah, this is, this is finished now. Eight, one. Um, I say it's finished. I've clearly got these two four pairs to be resolved by a ninth move from that four. There it is. What a lovely puzzle. Excellent, James. Excellent. That is tough. Tough in many ways. Um, I think the thermos were reasonably generous. If I'd been a little bit smarter about identifying that. Well, it wasn't the threes that did it, though, was it? It was this cell not being able to be both three and four. Very clever, actually. Really, really interesting. Um, I like that a lot. That's a super puzzle. Thank you, as always, for following us on the channel. Don't forget that stuff on Patreon. Sorry about the little diversion in the middle about unique and uh, and so on. And we'll be back with you for more with more tomorrow. Bye for now.